Good morning, Calvary Bible Church. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up and worship today. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing with me. strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and forever bless the Lord Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. lifted up God we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy amen Lord amen bless the Lord why don't you greet one another tell them you're glad they're here
You know, there may be some of us here today who are facing difficult challenges. In almost every group of people there are. Some more difficult than others, maybe. Um, I don't know if you've heard it before, but that's kind of our God's specialty. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Because he does impossible things. Amen. You heal the broken hearted. You set the captive free. You lift the heavy burden. And even now you are lifting me. There is no healer like the Lord our maker. There is no equal to the King of kings. Oh, our God is with us. We will fear no evil. Cause you do impossible things. Cause you do impossible surrounding me there you prepare a table oh, in the presence of my enemies there is no healer like the Lord our maker there is no equal to the king of kings oh, my God is with us we will fear no think it's no way no possible way can that happen and then guess what it happens I'm telling you I'm living proof multiple times multiple times just have faith just have faith simple to say right yeah simple to say hard sometimes to live but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm standing here today as evidence. Trust in the Lord, and he will make all things come together for good for those who love him. Amen. Amen. Mm. 
You stood before creation Eternity in your hand You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand You stood before my failure And carried the cross for my shame My sin weighed upon your shoulders My soul now to stand So what can I say? What could I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? So I walk upon salvation, your spirit. All I am 
is yours all i am is yours thank you jesus all i am is yours everything god every good part every bad part mm -hmm. yes, thank you, jesus. every Victory, every defeat. We lay at your feet, God, because you are God. You are real and you are our hope. You are Jesus. Sing with me. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that me. Master, Savior, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will There's something about that There's something about that There's something about your name. There's something about your name. There's just something.
your name. I asked uh, Doug to play that song uh, for me today. Um, it's an oldie. And as I was preparing for your message today, <clears throat> God had that song going through my head. And uh, that's what I have for you today. But think of those words, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Jesus. Most people acknowledge that there is a God. They acknowledge that there is a higher power. And they acknowledge that there's a big guy upstairs. But when it comes to the name of Jesus, some people say he was a good man. Maybe one of the best that ever lived, but just a man. Others say that he suffered from delusions of a Messiah complex. Some say he was a simple teacher and an egomaniac and a misguided fool. Questions arise like, is Jesus really God? Did he come to save sinners like us? And does God really care about me? I don't know about you, but whoever this Jesus is, he left a mark in history. Because no matter who you talk to or who you don't talk to, everybody knows the name of Jesus. Today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. This is a wonderful book. It's about relationships and fellowship. It's about fellowship with Christians and how, how we fellowship with other Christians. But more than anything else, it's about fellowship and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because see, you can't have a fellowship and relationship with other people unless you have a fellowship and relationship with Jesus Christ. God says, I... I loved you first, so now you can love. John writes this letter at a time when false teachers were coming into the, into the fold and are denying the incarnation of Christ. Now for some of us, like me, I had to look up the word incarnation and see what that word meant. And it says, the act of assuming flesh the gracious voluntary act of the Son of God in assuming a human body and human nature, the incarnation of Christ. And these men were coming in and giving false testimony, saying that Christ could not be fully God and fully man. So who is this Jesus? Who is he? Because John was writing this to correct false teachers. He, was, he wanted to correct their serious errors because he was an eyewitness of this Jesus. Andy Stanley says, it's not what we believe. It's what we know about Christ. We can believe anything we want about Christ, but actually it's about what we know about Christ. And John says, I was an eyewitness of who this Jesus is. So who is this Jesus? Who is he? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are sovereign, God. You're in control of everything. We thank you for that, God. You never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You're consistent. And all you want is fellowship with us and a relationship. So God, as we explore your word today, show us 
who this Jesus is. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let's read 1 John 1, 1 through 4. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life, the life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and, was, and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and the, his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make your joy complete. I was going to preach on the whole whole chapter. I'm going, oh my gosh, there's so much information in here. We're just going to stop at four verses. And I encourage you, please, to read 1 John. It's a short book, and it's a great book. But here is John, and he starts at the beginning. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen, with our eyes, we have looked upon him in our hands and we have handled him concerning him, the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness to this. That was which from the beginning, John writes about this, it's not the beginning of, of, of uh, creation, it's the beginning of Genesis 1.1. And he ties, which says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then in the book of John 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John takes us all the way back to this time in the eternity past, to this one which was from the beginning. John said that this one, which was from the beginning, is God. Because they, they existed, and we'll get that, that to in a minute, we, they existed before all else. And they are the basis of the existence of all things. John was a witness. Hearsay doesn't get there. John saw it. If you go to court, or if you have an attorney, and they're trying to prosecute and they want to have, have witnesses to, to, for facts of what happened so they know what's true and what's not. And John here is an eyewitness. John had a personal experience with this eternal one. This eternal subject of John has been audibly heard, physically seen, intently studied by John and he's been tangibly touched. And this was really enormous for John to tell this. It was enormous because the internal God became accessible to man in the most basic way. One that everyone could relate to. This eternal one can be known and he has revealed himself to us. It is enormous because John's words have the weight of an eyewitness. No heresy, no myth, no clever storytelling. John carefully studied this eternal one. He was with him for three and a half years. It's enormous because it derails the false teachings that were creeping into the church known as Gnosticism. And part of Gnosticism is taught that though Jesus was God, he was not actually a physical man. 
but some kind of pseudo-physical phantom. John said, we saw him, we heard him, we studied him and we touched him. He's real. John goes on and he says, this one was the word of life. This was a huge statement for John at this time. He was speaking with Jews. And for the Jews, God was often referred to as the Word. And because they knew that God perfectly revealed himself in the Word, they knew who he was talking about. Turn to John, the book of John. Keep your finger on here, but keep your hand. Turn to John chapter 1, verse 1. Or chapter 1. Verses 14 through 7. I'm going to read verse 1 first. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Skip down to verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace, full of truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he whom I said, he who comes after me has surpre uh, surpassed me because he was uh, before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses's, Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. John was saying to everyone that this word, this word that you've been talking about and writing about all these centuries, we have heard him, we have seen him, we have studied him and we have touched him. Now let us tell you about him, who this man is. Verse further in verse two, it says, this life appeared, this life manifested, manifested. This is life is, is physically real. His life is physically real. There is, this is no fairy tale, no once upon a time. John said, I am an eyewitness to this. He's here. It says, we proclaim to you the eternal life. He expressed, John expressed that Jesus himself is eternal and therefore God. Turn to Micah. Micah's just before Nehemiah. Or Nahum, I'm sorry. Here we have prophecy of the word. Chapter 5, verses 2. Verse 2. It says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, from ancient times. And in the Greek, in, the, in that time there, it says that word uh, ancient times is everlasting, is beyond the vanishing point. The ruler is Jesus, the Messiah. 
footnote says, Micah accurately predicted Christ's birthplace hundreds of years before Jesus was born. The promised eternal king in David's line who would come to live as a man. He had been alive forever from old, from, from of old, from ancient times. Although eternal Christ entered human history as the man, Jesus of Nazareth. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. Back to 1 John. <clears throat> it says, this life appeared, we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father. There is an eternal relationship between the Father and the Son. An eternal relationship of love and fellowship between the Father and the Son. Jesus even referred to this in, in John 17, 24. He says, for you love me before the foundations of the world. Jesus was with the Father. Jesus who is eternal and eternal life himself is distinct from the Father. John here is building an understanding of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That one God exists as three persons, equal and one, yet distinct in their, in their person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I've been a Christian for 30 some years <laughs> and trying to understand the the Trinity um, still baffles me. And in my little simple mind, I'm going to try to show you an example of what this is. And this is the best way, sorry God, but this is the best way that I can uh, explain the Trinity. What do I have here? An egg, okay. What's this part here? Okay. What's this part here? Can you see that? This part? That's the white, okay? And this part? That's the yolk, okay? All one egg. Three different entities. They all have their own separate part. Okay? Like I said, I'm sorry, I got a simple mind. But trying to understand how the Holy Spirit how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can all be one. This is the closest I can come to. And to me, it kind of makes sense to me. All one egg, but all have a three. All three have a different purpose. Get that? Can you get that? I hope so. It works for me. Back to Matthew 28, 19. When Jesus was standing on the hill and ready to, to leave, he goes, Go therefore into all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the names of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name. Plural, singular. Singular, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's word is so good. It never contradicts each itself. So here we have the God And then in verse 3, John invites us into a relationship here. He says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. This externally existent, physically present Word of Life, who is God, it is a person distinct from the Father, wants to have a fellowship with both God's people 
and with him. He wants to have an intimate, personal relationship with you and with me. We can enjoy this fellowship even though we don't understand the working parts of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your eyes, your eyes, you, could, you see through your eyes without ever knowing how the, the workings of it is. We don't understand all the workings of our eyes, but we see through our eyes, right? And it's the same with God. We know God and believe in him as he revealed himself, even though we can't understand everything about his personal or about his person or his nature. John says that we can have fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Not only a fellowship, but a relationship. Now, for many people, this is totally unappealing. Mainly because they don't know who God is. An invitation to a personal relationship with God is about as attractive to some as telling an eighth grader they can have a relationship with the assistant vice principal. Sorry, Glenn. But here's the thing. When we ask and, and seek a relationship with Jesus and begin to know the greatness, the goodness, and the glory of God, the more we will want the, a closer relationship with him. When we were dating, when my wife and I were dating, I dated a lot, and she dated a lot. When I knew she was the one, I wanted to spend all my time with her. I, we sat on the phone and we talked for hours on the phone. We found out what each other was like. We grew closer. We could, couldn't stand having, being apart from each other. We spent time with each other. And that's what God wants us to do with him. And you say, well, how do we can do that? I can't touch him. I can't feel him. His word, his word, the Bible, is his love letters to us. To show us, to tell, so we know who he is, to know how he works, and 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 he just wants to have a, a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with me. When we seek a relationship with Jesus and begin to know his greatness and his goodness and his glory of God, it's only natural that we want to go closer to him. Other people turn from this relationship with God because they feel so distant from him. They want a relationship with God but feel completely disqualified, so distant. And that's when they need someone like us. Someone to tell them what God has done for them. That they too can have this kind of relationship. And it's possible. Brothers and sisters, we can have a relationship and fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. A shared life. We don't add Jesus to our life. we enter into a relationship of a shared life with Jesus. We share our life with him and he shares his life with us. We can have a relationship with God and the eternally existent, physically present, the word of life, God yet distinct from the Father is God the Son whose name is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. And when we do that, when we do that, 
John writes that God will make our joy complete. The result of a relationship with Jesus the Christ is that our joy may be full. This joy is cheerfulness based on God. No matter what happens, God is still there. It's not based on happiness. Happiness is based on the circumstances. Our joy is important. However, it comes under attack in many different ways. External circumstances like health and relationships, marriages, moods or emotions, and sin can take away our joy. Jesus says, if you have a fellowship with me and a relationship with me, I will make your joy complete. For followers of Jesus, joy is not found in things of this world, as good as they might be. But true joy is only in fellowship, relationship, and love we share with God, the Father, and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who guides and leads us. So who is this Jesus, you ask? Who is this man? Who is this God? Who is he? John says, in the beginning, God, the eternal, the eternal God, was before all things. That this God appeared to us, physically manifested, so that he himself and others like John could, could testify to this as eyewitnesses. We are told that this God is the word of life. That Jesus is distinct from the God the Father. One God exists as three persons, equal and yet one, distinct in their, in each, distinct in their uh, person. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that we can have a relationship and fellowship with this God. often introduced to us by God's people through fellowship. This externally existent God, the word of life, who is physically present with them and present for fellowship is God the Son. And his name is Jesus Christ. And lastly, our fellowship and relationship with Jesus leads to a life filled with, in fullness of joy. Jesus, the Son of God, is real. He's real. And he wants to have a relationship with you and with me. Now, for most of us today in this room, this is confirmation of, of that fellowship and relationship we have with Jesus Christ. Some of us today in this room might be thinking, good try, Scott. This may be who you think Jesus is, but it's not what I believe. I believe there's a God, but this Jesus thing, I don't know about that. I don't know. You know, and that, oh, I'm okay with that. And it's a fair, that's a fair answer. But let me ask you this. If you believe, if what you believed about Jesus wasn't true, would you want to know the truth? James 2.19 says, you believe there is a God. There is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder at his name. The, de the demons believe in Jesus, but they don't obey him, and they shudder in fear of him. Next question I would ask you is, 
If you were to die today, are you sure you would go to heaven? Yes or no? And a lot of times I hear, I sure hope so. And the third question I would ask you, when you get to heaven's gates and Jesus is standing there and he says, why should I let you into my kingdom? What would you say? Can I have the worship team come forward, please? I want to share with you about this real eternally God who was from the beginning and is still here. <clears throat> Jesus died for your sins. He shed his blood for you. Scripture is very clear, is that God's over there and we're over here. And there's a big chasm in between. And a lot of times we say, well, I'm a good person. Um, I give to the poor. I work at the hospital, volunteer. I help people. Um, I give money to churches. I, I'm just an all-around good person. I go to church. I sing. I'm a good person, God. And we try to build all these steps. And God's word says that all of our workings, all of our own workings are like filthy rags. They're not good. So we all sin. And because of that sin, there's a price we have to pay, and that's death. Now, it could be a physical death, but I think it's more of a spiritual death. And it's total separation from God. But Jesus steps in. He says that uh, while we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. While we're still sinners, he died for us. He died for you. And he says, I am the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes through the Father except through me. And all you have to do is believe in your heart and know that he's God and ask him to come into your life. He says, you're mine, my child. If we confess our sins, he says, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins and, and that we are full of righteousness. What an awesome God we have. And he meets you right where you're at. Say, well, I, 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 need, to, I need to quit smoking and I need to quit drinking and, and I just need to quit doing all my immoral stuff that I've been doing out in the world. And, and uh, uh, I got to clean up my act before I come to him. And Jesus says, no, right now, right here. You let me come into your life, I'll clean you up. I'll clean you up. He did that with me. I was a smoking, drinking, cussing construction worker. And the first thing God worked on my life was my cussing. And later on down the road, he started working on my drinking. And later on down the road, he started working on my smoking. And he took it away. That's the God that I serve. That's the God I want in my life. And it's all because he just wants to have a relationship with you. 
He wants to fellowship you. He wants to share his life with you. And he wants you to share your life with him. I'm going to have the uh, worship team play a song um, here. And, and as they're playing this song, I'd like to have you stand up. Right, just you stand up. If, uh, if you don't know Christ and you want to know who Christ is and what he can do in your life, I, I want you to come forward. I'm going to have some people up here and uh, uh, we will share that with you. Um, if you do, this is the best day of your life. Uh, the best day of your life. And um, I want you to do that. If, if you need prayer, if you are hurting physically, you're just whatever is happening in your life and you need somebody to pray for, I want you to come forward so we can pray for you. Um, so with that, could you please do this now? And I'll meet you down here. Can I have um, Joyce and my wife and Bob and Honey King come up, please? And, um, Jesus, my son.